how to build strong legs or maybe it's how to build a big squat or whatever you want to title the video. I never know how to title these things. Um, not that I have a huge squat. Um, or maybe I do. I don't know. It's hard to tell sometimes, you know. You don't know if you're comparing yourself to people who are using things. Um, or if, you know, maybe you're just weak. But what I will comment on is things that made a big difference for me. So that's what's, you know, you spend a lot of time squatting and you squat and you squat and you squat and you do all these different squat programs. And then eventually you start realizing that like squatting is not making my squat go up. Damn. So what do you do, right? And so I will tell you the things that made my squat improve besides just more squatting. So number one of all things, and I, I can't believe I'm going to admit this, um, it was training my adductors. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That machine at the gym that, you know, you don't want to use because it looks stupid. Um, that's actually a decent machine. You can also do like Copenhagen's and stuff like that. That's mainly what I've, I've done is a lot of Copenhagen work. Um, and then I also got this weird thing. I found it. Um, my wife used to do Pilates and she had some kind of like hip thing for doing Pilates. I started using that. Um, yeah, that worked. So go figure. Training your adductors will improve your squat. Um, uh, I think that for a lot of people, our squat form um, is probably, you know, more quad dominant and stuff like that. And so the adductor kind of gets neglected. And at some point, the adductor actually becomes a limiting factor because it's a muscle that doesn't really get a lot of direct targeted work. So there's that. The next thing that I noticed um, that improved my, my squat was doing more hamstring work. Um... I am not a bodybuilder, and I am ashamed to admit this, but I started doing hamstring curls. Um, I should probably go to some type of meeting. Do they have like an AA type thing for people who do hamstring curls? Um, and so, you know, strange as it is, I know I'm a barbell guy, you know, and I, I don't really like using machines and stuff, but hamstring curls, big difference, big difference. Um, mind you, I go pretty heavy on my hamstring curls and I keep them 10 reps or less. So I'm not sitting there pumping out sets of 20. It's like three to five sets of 10. Um, and I find that it, it helps me to really engage and pull hard, like violently on the concentric. And then I slowly lower it. Um, that seems to make a big difference. The more hamstring curls I did, the better my squat got. I assume that the reason for this is because it's stabilizing my pelvis. The next thing that brought my squat up was dimmel deadlifts. Yes, dimmel deadlifts. Um, definitely fried my glutes. And again, I think that this helps with stabilizing your pelvis. So, um, that makes a big difference as well, okay? Uh, next on the list, ab wheel rollouts. Um, I did them incorrectly for a very long time, and I never understood why people thought that ab wheel rollouts were useful. So I always thought it was a dumb thing to do because I wasn't doing them right. And, um, and then I started watching a video of Dan John doing them, and I was like, oh, I'm doing them wrong. If you do these correctly, you will have a very hard time doing high reps of these. I used to be able to do stupid shit. Like, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to do ab wheel rollouts and I could do sets of 50, no problem. And I was like, what's the big deal? Okay, when you do them correctly, like, around 10, it starts to really hurt. And, like, it, I've actually, I'm pretty sure I've strained abdominal muscles doing ab wheel rollouts, um, more than a few times, I was like, holy shit, that, that wouldn't really hurt. I felt like a tearing sensation, and I was sore for days. Um, so you have to be careful with these. But if you do them correctly, I will roll outs, okay? Hmm. 
that's an interesting one. Uh, moving forward, so we've, we've talked about, you know, training your adductors, hamstring curls, all this stuff like that. It should not surprise you the next one on the list is leg extensions. Um, again, I try to go pretty heavy on them and, and not do like super high reps. So I'm not doing like some type of uh, Tom Platt's thing where you're doing like a set of 50 or something. Uh, I load them up pretty heavy and I would tell you that most of my sets are somewhere in the 10 to 15 rep range. Um, occasionally I'll squeeze out 20 and if I squeeze out 20 then I increase the load so that I end up back down at around 10. Um, so, you know, leg extensions. Again, though, what I find to be important is how they're executed. So the concentric is fast, explosive. I try to kick that thing through the roof and then I lower it as slow as I can. And um, you guys can find stuff out there, like putting a pad behind it so that your leg is actually like underneath you some more. So like it actually extends the uh, range of motion. Um, and of course, actually, one of the things that I've uh, come across is apparently there's, there's these benches where you can lay down, like so you're flat on your back and doing leg extensions. That's even harder than doing seated leg extensions. You get a lot more out of that. Um, so that's another one that makes a big difference. Um, and, and I think that that's massively underrated because I don't see anyone doing the laying leg extension. I'm, I don't know why there aren't videos on that. That's a very effective thing to do. And strange enough, as I hate to, you know, admit some of these things, calf work of all things. Calf work. Um, you know, I heard Louis Simmons say that the soleus stabilizes the knee, so you should do seated calf raises. Now, I train my calves all the time because I'm terrified of Achilles tendon ruptures. I know that that's hard to believe because you have probably seen me and you realize I have the world's smallest calves, but I also have the world's smallest forearms and it doesn't seem to make a difference. I can close a captain's of crush number two, no problem. So um, I don't have weak forearms. I just have really tiny little bones. Like I've always pointed out in the past, my, my wrists are six inches around. So I have very small bones. Um, this is probably why I have very small calves as well because I have very tiny little bones. I'm not built to lift heavy weights. But doing seated calf raises, which, you know, whatever, it's another machine. Um, but you don't have to use a machine. You can do all kinds of other things. You can just stack up 45 pound plates on your knees and do them. That's what I do. Uh, but yes, seated calf raises. Seated calf raises will improve your squat. And, and I found this interesting because for years and years and years, I've done standing calf raises. I do them, you know, with my front foot elevated so I'm getting that heel drop and everything. As I pointed out, I'm terrified of Achilles tendon ruptures, so I do like hops and jumping rope and calf raises all the time. I've been doing that for over 20 years now and my calves are not big, but you know, I, I, I train calves to failure. They don't grow. Um, but doing seated calf raises, you know, hmm, my knee feels much more stable and my squat went up. So those are the things that I would suggest to you to build strong legs. Um, you start putting those things in and suddenly your squat will go up. And of course, if your squat goes up, then you know that your legs are getting stronger. Um, but you know, squatting by itself, uh, at some point, more squatting is not going to make your squat go up by a whole lot more. I mean, it will, but you're gonna see very slowed progress. You start putting these other things in as your accessory work and you will see your squat go up.